Are you getting older like me? Can't read stuff really close to your face anymore? Telling kids to get off your lawn? But maybe more so with the hearing, particularly when people are talking to you or the dialogue in your favorite movies while you're using your home theater. Hey babe, did laundry get finished? What? Can you take out the trash? See, I can't hear a word she's saying. If you can make out what she's saying, let me know in the comments. Well, that may be selective hearing, but in any case, Apple solved this really well. If you're using an Apple TV, you use the S Lady voice commands. You say, hey, what did they say? And the Apple TV skips back 15 or so seconds, automatically turns on the subtitles and plays the content that you just watched back again, allowing you to read the parts of the dialogue that you may have missed and automatically turns the subtitles off again so that you can continue on your way, enjoying your TV show, enjoying your movie, whatever it may be. Well, what about Kaleidoscape? I've done the videos on the channel where I talked about how I use Kaleidoscape with my Control 4 system and how I was specifically programming some buttons uh, to help kind of with this. In the Control 4 driver for K, there is a uh, multi-second, it's fundamentally a 10 second skip back operation and I bind that to the record button so I can skip back as I need to. However, there's no uh, fundamental capability to have the subtitles automatically come on built in to that kind of default action. So I went to the next step on my DVR button for my Halo remote. As I talked about in the prior video, I bind a subtitle toggle so I can go from off to one to one to one and eventually it'll cycle all the way back of the way around the list and turn the subtitles off again. So when I'm watching a movie, I miss some dialogue. I skip back a couple times. I hit the subtitle button to get to the English ones for me, watch that passage again, let it finish, hit that toggle button a few more times to turn the subtitles off. But as I was talking to a home theater friend recently doing a home theater consultation, we were talking about programming control four, we were talking about Kaleidoscape, got to thinking like there's probably a better way. We can probably do this better with the programming capabilities that's available to us in control four. And oh boy, can we do better. So I have coded and fairly automatic skip back give you the facility to turn the subtitles on play the content back again and give you the facility to turn the subtitles off we can't do it completely automatically just because the controls uh, the triggers that would be needed uh, in the kaleidoscape driver for control 4 aren't exactly there talk about that more at towards the end of the video but we can still do this pretty cool so let me demonstrate it and then i'll show you how to program this and get it into your own Control 4 setup. All right, so let's do a little demo here. I'm playing the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. We just watched this in the theater with the family. Ignore the black, I have to black out the video as well as mute the audio. I don't want any DMCA takedowns or anything like that on the video. In any case, notice at the bottom, no subtitles. However, let's say something just happened. They're talking, I missed it. Well, what did they say? Let's use the handy dandy Techthusiasm Kaleidoscape Control 4 macro and get those subtitles on for a short period of time. So I'm going to hit my DVR button one time. I'm going to pick the English subtitles. The content is going to jump back 20 seconds. I'm going to do two skips in the macro. Now I've got my subtitles on. I've got it programmed for a period of time. I'm going to repeat that piece of content that I just watched reading what I need to read. There we go. Automatically pop back up, use the remote, turn the subtitles off and I continue to watch my movie absolutely seamlessly. Let's do it one more time, DVR button, turn those English subtitles on, notice the skip back, and boom, subtitles back on. <clears throat> I thought this was pretty cool. Took a little bit of thinking, okay, what commands are available in the Control 4 Kaleidoscape drivers? How can I make this happen? What are the options that are available? And I think this totally beats what I was doing before where, uh, where I had to manually cycle through all of the subtitles available for the movie. Some movies only have a couple and it's not a big deal. Some movies can have a lot. If I actually look at the menu for this, uh, for this particular movie, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight different subtitles. That's a lot if you have to cycle them. Now again, if you notice, I had the remote in my hand the whole time. I trigger the action. I'm able to interact using the remote to pick the specific subtitle track that I want. It goes away after I select it, and when it pops back up again for me, I can go to the no, I can go to the off, and turn them off. Let's take a look in Home Composer and see how to actually do this in a configuration. All right, folks, so here is how we do it. I am in Composer Home Edition, Control 4 Composer Home here. 
I go to agents, I go to macros, and I made a new macro. I, I called it K. What did they say? Now that creates the macro. Now we have to code it. I go to programming. I scroll all the way down to macros. I pick the macro that I want to program. And here it is. You can see there's quite a few steps in there, essentially. Uh, step one, open the playback options overlay with the navigation tab selected of theater kaleidoscape of your kaleidoscape. Now how you find this stuff in order to build out this macro is over on the right. You go to actions, you go to kaleidoscape, and here are all of the commands that we can program and issue. And in this case, this is a device specific command and it's called show navigation overlay. This is the only way to really get to the pop-up menu in a reliable place that we can key off of to get over to the subtitle section of the menu. Note that there is an option in here to specifically do subtitle options. However, it doesn't bring up the subtitle options selection. It just automatically cycles you to the next subtitle, which is what I was doing with the key bindings that I had demonstrated before. So this is what we have and this is how we program it. So first step. So we want to open up that navigation page and we want to open it up again to a deterministic tab and that allows us to do that. From the navigation pane, subtitles is three movements over to the right. So the next three steps of the macro here of the script are push right on the theater kaleidoscape. That gets us over to the subtitle collection menu. Now we add those jump backs. Under device specific commands, there are options in here. It's called instant replay. And it says jump back 15 seconds on the kaleidoscape. No, it's not actually 15 seconds. When you execute this in the menu, in the commands, you actually get a 10 second skip back. It says 15. In my, my measuring the, the jump back using the, the mapped buttons with the info overlay up, it actually goes back 10. So in this case, I'm jumping back 20 seconds. I program in two of the jump backs sequentially, boom, boom, one right after the other. Then I delay, and I've got a little bit of a sludge in here. I've got 20 seconds of jump back, but I'm, I'm accounting a little bit for how long do I want to transpire before I bring the subtitle overlay back up. And in this case, I'm delaying 18 seconds. The delays are available right here at the top in the Home Composer configuration. Then, now we need to be able to trigger up the option and turn the subtitles off. Again, we wanna pull up that navigation menu. We wanna go three more over to the right. Note when you do this in a script like this and you execute it, if you go back and you watch the earlier part of the video, it goes pretty much right over to that subtitle tab. There's really no delay. You don't see it moving. It doesn't really hitch. It's very, very fast. And so that's the macro. And you could tune this to be how you want. Maybe you only want 15 seconds or rather 10 seconds effectively of jump back and not 20. Maybe you want more. Well, then take one of these out or put three of them in instead of two. Maybe you want to customize after the jump back, how long do you want the subtitles to remain on the screen? Maybe you want the subtitles to remain on a little bit longer than the jump back actually does, just increase the delay. I could do one jump back, that's 10 seconds of jump back. I could delay 15 seconds and then I would continue watching forward into the movie by about five seconds before the pop-up appears again and I would turn those subtitles off. After that, now in terms of binding to the remote, again, I put this on the DVR button. Well, how do we do that? Pretty easy. We go to programming for the room that we want to program. In this case, I'm gonna do the theater and I'm gonna program a room specific command to the DVR button on the control for Halo Touch. Now, I could use the record button. I could use DVR in this case. I also have free buttons that would be available to bind this to. Could also be guide and previous. However, if you watch my other control for Kaleidoscape programming stuff, you'll know that previous and guide, I already bind to special functions. Again, I still liked having the skip back on record. And so DVR to me is the perfect button to do this. And essentially all you have to do then is go to your programming actions over here, pick the macros, pick the macro that you want to execute and put it right in to that bound programming event. You'll notice in this case, I do have, it does say if room select, if, if selected room <clears throat> device is the kaleidoscape, that's because I do a zone two sharing of my kaleidoscape between both the theater and the living room. You don't need to worry about that. So ignore that if condition, you would just simply drop the macro in uh, unless you did have something else special that you needed to program around. 
So there you go. I love getting more sophisticated with my control force setup, particularly with the devices that I use like the Kaleidoscape. If you've got some other thoughts about how to optimize that macro, some other things to, to make it better or whatnot, put them in the comments. Let me know. Let's share some ideas, program together, and, uh, and come up with an even better way of doing something pretty cool. Otherwise, again, get that in your home composer, call your dealer, and see if they can put that little bit of programming into your system. I guarantee that will prove useful at some point in time or some point in your life <laughs> when you find yourself watching a movie in bewilderment, uh, wondering what those people or those characters just said. I know I do that all the time. So I'm super eager now to have this functionality available in my system. As always, if you found that content useful, hey, leave a super thanks, leave a PayPal or a Venmo tip. If you're gonna buy a Kaleidoscape, go do it from Audio Advice. The links are all down in the description below. Let them know that Techthusiasm sent you over the phone, or if you're working with the Send AV, tell them as well, shop with Amazon, all kinds of different ways to shower the channel with your hard-earned dollars. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave those comments, and again, particularly if you've got anything else, cool tricks with regards to controlling your Kaleidoscape in a Control 4 system. I want to hear about it, I want to optimize it, and let's make some content about it and share it with the world. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more home theater discussion and fun. Hey, the garden needs to be weeded. I can't really hear you. All right, I guess it's fine if we go ahead and buy those new Kaleidoscape Terra Prime servers. Sweet!